Good morning and welcome to Southern Hills this morning. We do want to extend a special welcome to all of our guests and visitors, as well as those of you joining us via live stream this morning. I hope everyone's had a chance to pick up one of our, now, uh, one of our bulletins this morning. If not, there's still plenty of copies left back in the back foyer. But just a few announcements we'd like to make before we begin. Uh, Mary Nell Hogg has been in the hospital with an infection, but she's hoping to be moved to a rehabilitation center on Tuesday. Also want to remember Omira Heakin as she's in Columbia, South America, uh, due to her brother's Carlos's accident. Um, also, Donovine Holt wanted us to remember her in our, in our prayers as she'll be having a biopsy on December the 2nd. Then we have several upcoming activities and events. Uh, for our parents, on November the 27th, our youth group members will be here at the building all day next Sunday uh, to provide free baby, babysitting for, so you can start your uh, holiday shopping or begin your uh, decorating. Also, for the ladies, our ladies holiday gala will be December the 8th here at the building at 6, 6 p.m. Uh, more information about that is in the bulletin. Uh, but those are the announcements that I have for this morning. If you would, bow with me in prayer as we begin. Father in heaven, we are thankful for you. We are thankful for your son. We are thankful for this time as we can gather around your throne and worship your name. Father, as we enter in this period of worship, we ask that you be with each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. It's great to see you all this morning. Our first song will be number 738. We were glorified by the armies, we were glorified by the Lamb, we were glorified by the Lord of hosts, who is the great I am. For the Lord reigns in majesty, we will bow before His throne. song will be number nine. Number nine.
chapter 11, beginning in verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, 
lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day, for all the blessings that you've given us, all the things that you provide for us, that we have used these things as you will. Especially now, Father, we pray that we take this opportunity to worship you in peace and that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. Please be with those who aren't with us, Father, either through accident or illness. Help them to regain their strength and regain their comfort and can return to us. Be with us through the rest of this day, Father, and let us use it as you would have us. These things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, and if it be thy will, amen. To prepare for the Lord's Supper, we'll sing 916. Come share the Lord. We gather Supper is an order of worship, and it is a commandment, Luke 22, 14, and reading. At this time, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians from chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. Now, brother, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For which I received, I passed on to you. 
as of first importance that the Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, that he was buried, he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and he appeared to Peter and to the 12. Here's the tie of the scripture that I just read to the Lord's Supper. It's unique. Every Sunday morning, I get to take an emblem to remind me to stay steadfast, to stay steadfast for the goal of eternal life. Would you please bow with me? Our Father in heaven, we are thankful for life. We're thankful this time that we can gather around the emblems and to partake. Bless the bread as we partake it now, for this is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Let us bow again. Our Father, we thank you for this time that we can worship you. We thank you for the fruit of the vine, which represents thy blood that shed on the cross for us. May we take it away, pleasing unto you. For this is our prayer in Christ's name, amen.
also a commandment, and in the order of worship, we get to give. Giving can be done in many different ways. Giving can be given through our knowledge and teaching. Giving can be done physically and helping others less fortunate than we are physically. But at this time, we get to give financially. Financially, because we have been rewarded. And keep in mind that we have been rewarded because the Lord has rewarded us financially. Would you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, thank you for the rewards that you continue to give us. May we give in a way that's loving within our hearts, for this is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. If you're using the psalm book this morning, you can mark number 781. We'll sing that at the end of the lesson. Before the lesson, let's stand and sing number 923.
If you have your Bibles, let me encourage you to open them up to that passage uh, as we will work through it uh, here uh, throughout the course of our lesson. Um, that is Luke 17, 11 through 19. Uh, while you're turning there, I will go ahead and wish you all a happy Thanksgiving week. Uh, it is a good week, I think, to think about all the things that we need to be thankful for. Uh, and um, it's kind of what we're talking about in our lesson. I, I guess when you think about giving things, like, like there's a general, like you should be a thankful person to everybody around you. You know, that, that it's a good thing and a biblical thing to express thanks and gratitude to family and to friends and, and to people you are around. Um, on the other hand, the lesson that we're talking about today is, is really more of, of appreciating the things God has blessed you with. And, and that's what we'll see as we go through this passage. Um, what we're going to do as, as we work throughout, it's a pretty well-known passage in Scripture. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and um, like just read through it. And then after we read through it and we get uh, the story, then what we'll do is we'll um, just highlight some, some points that, that we want to take with us as, as we go through, okay? So the passage begins. It says, On the way to Jerusalem, he, that, that is Jesus, was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And we'll stop there. It, it is somewhat significant to recognize, like, the location. Uh, we're not told, like, the exact point, but it is between Samaria and it is between Galilee. So, like, this mixture almost between Samaritan and Israel, Right, and so what we're going to find is, is, is there's going to be a 10 that are somewhat mixed between those, between a Samaritan and, and those of Israel, right? And he continues, as he entered the village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance. The reason they stood at a distance is because they were, were legally by the law bound to. They had a disease that uh, made them unclean, and so they couldn't live in the general community. As, as you read through the law in the Old Testament, like they were like legally bound to be separated. And you have to think about like what kind of like a, a miserable existence that is. You have a sickness that is painful, debilitating, will probably cost you your life. And you're not around, allowed to be around your family. You're not allowed to be around your friends. You're exiled. You are removed. Uh, you are isolated. Uh, put maybe in like a little commune with other people who have the same sickness. And, and you're just there to kind of live out your days until ultimately painfully die. Um, and they lifted their voices up uh, saying, Jesus Master, have mercy on us. It's significant, a couple things here, that, that what they're doing is they're calling Jesus master. Like the, the word for master here is typically only used by the disciples. And so like, like as you read throughout the Bible, usually like non-followers of Jesus would call him teacher or something. But disciples of Jesus called him Master. These are men who had a high understanding of Jesus. These are men who knew him. And at some point, we don't know when and we don't know how, came to appreciate and to follow him in some way. They called him master. And they knew this also about Jesus, that he was a compassionate or a merciful man. And so what they're asking their master is to show them compassion, to show them mercy. We are sick we are hurt, we are dying, we are separated from our family, and what we need from you is help. We can't do it ourselves. There's our, we are beyond our resources. We need you to show us compassion. And when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. Now, that was done because, again, through the law, like you are exiled from the community. But if you are healed, what you do is you present yourself to the priest. And the priest is the one who is told in the law, like, what to look for for leprosy and different things. And so he's the one who could uh, kind of almost like a doctor, like, like, like investigate uh, and see whether you have leprosy or not. And so he says, okay, he, Go and present yourself to him so that 
hopefully he would say you're clean. And as they went, they were cleansed. You know, this is somewhat different than, than some of the other miracles Jesus has done. Because oftentimes what Jesus does is he just says, you're healed, and they're healed. This time he says, go present yourself to the priest. They're still sick when they start to walk. They still have the disease when they're headed on their way. And I don't know at which point, I don't know how far they were from their little commune to where they were when they got to the priest that they looked and they said, wait a second now, I'm healed. And I kind of believe they, they ended up making their way to the priest. We don't know that, but, but if somehow they were, they were officially recognized as clean. They no longer have this disease. They, they no longer are going to, in their minds, they no longer are they going to live out the rest of their days debilitated, injured, sick, dying, separated from all their loved ones. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now, he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, we're not 10 cleansed. Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Beautiful. A man who started just a few verses earlier, sick, injured, hurt, debilitated, dying, separated from family, is now free to go to spend time with his family, to spend time with his loved ones, to, to return to his home, cleansed from his sickness. I believe cleansed from his sin. A couple things to note about this passage. First, I want you to notice the concept of giving thanks and giving praise. The reality is, as we think about the 10, they all started as somewhat believers in Jesus. They all shouted out to him, Master, have mercy on us. They all called Jesus Master. When Jesus told them to go, they were all willing to go. They all believed that Jesus had power to be compassionate and to cleanse them from their sin. They all called Jesus master. I don't believe that anything throughout this story that we're reading here would make us think that their beliefs about Jesus have changed. If anything, it, it, I, I would imagine that every one of them grew even stronger in their belief in Jesus. I would think that all 10 of them were somewhat appreciative of Jesus. That all 10 of them were thankful and, and excited and happy in their hearts about the work that Jesus did and the, the compassion that he showed. I would think that, that every one of these, as they went to their homes and went to their families, would, would be thankful and and. and, and and just rejoice within themselves about the man Jesus, that he was master before, and certainly he's master now. But what they felt in their hearts was expressed, was given by one. And I think that we learned something about giving of thanks. We call this Thanksgiving week. There's a giving of it. It's like a gift I received and I can't return back what God has given to me. He's given me greater than anything I could ever ask for. But what can I 
give him. Thanks. Praise. It's something offered. It's something given. It's something expressed. It's something said. It's not just felt. It's not just within you. It is outward. It is action. It is doing something for someone who has done something for you. I don't know what they all felt, but I do know one gave something. He offered it. One fell down at the feet of Jesus and praised God. One said, thank you. You've offered me. You've given to me. You were compassionate to me. And they expressed it or he expressed it. My goal throughout this week is is that, and, and, and really always, that we would be people who who think about all the things God has blessed us with. And we often do that. Like we often say like, like like count your blessings. Uh, And and we talk about like, like like even sometimes I've I've heard people recommend like giving lists and writing lists. Like, like, Like of all the things, think about what God has done for you and what God has blessed you with. That's a wonderful thing to do. I encourage you to do that. Think about, contemplate, Mull over, meditate upon all the things God has blessed you with. But then go a step further and express it. Praise him for it. Let your voice speak to God about all the things you recognize that he's done for you. Notice this also. He was a Samaritan, called later a foreigner. You know, it's somewhat of an unfortunate reality in life that sometimes those we are the most familiar with um, can sometimes get the worst of us. I think we, we, we draw comfortable with people, right? And it's just, just a fact of life that like, I think, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll like give you my, my situation. Like my wife does things for me every single day. That if somebody else were to do it for me, I'd be like, you didn't have to do that. Thank you. Like, 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 like I come home and the house is cleaned and like, like, I don't know. Like if somebody else were to come over to my house and clean my house, I'd be like, wow, like, like what a, what an act. Like, like you didn't have to do that. I thank you for it. Right. And, and, and you'll, take care of my children, you know? And I'm like, wow, like, that's a lot of work. Like, I, I, like, I appreciate the hours that we're put into, to watching these kids and changing their diapers and, and getting, not all of them, like, uh, at one point, uh, but like, like get, getting them ready and like, like feeding them and like, like taking care of them, like, like driving them from here to there. Like, like I would, I would be overwhelmed and thankful for anybody else, but if I could speak badly of myself, sometimes I go home and don't, you know, feel overwhelmed um, with thankfulness. I think there's this just a, a, a tendency to almost grow to expect it, um, almost grow to I hate to use the word mundane, but, but certain things become just kind of commonplace. And I think if we're not careful, the same thing could happen with God. And we had our, our, our Lord's Supper talk just a moment ago, and, and it was mentioned how every week we have this reminder, right? Every week we come here and we think about uh, this, this um, we're commanded really like, like to come together and to, to remember what the Lord has done on our behalf. He died for you, for me. Crucified. His blood shed on my behalf. His body pierced on my behalf. He was hung on a cross for my behalf. And, and, and if we're not careful, like, we can just like, let that become mundane. 
just what we do on Sunday, right? We go there, we, we, we drink the juice, we eat, we eat a little bit of bread, and then uh, we go throughout our week. One of them is a foreigner, Samaritan. Maybe it wasn't as mundane to him. He didn't grow to expect it. We need to be like that. Where, where though we recognize the blessings and the blessings and the blessings, we, we, we read scripture. And how often do we treat scripture reading like it's almost like it's a chore when God is speaking to us? Like, like we, can, we can take the great blessings of God and just not like appreciate them. Don't let it grow complacent the blessings that God has showered upon us. Another thing, there's a numerical value here that we need to learn. Like, we're we're not 10 cleansed, where are the nine? So like, there are 10 healed, one returns. And it reminds me, I don't know if it reminds you, it reminds me a little bit of, 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 Jesus is teaching about like the wide way that leads to destruction, the narrow way that leads to life. Um, Guys, most people receive the blessings of God over and over and over again. We wake up and breathe the air that he gave. We see through the eyes that he has given to us. We let the light that God has showered upon the world is shown upon the world. Like, Everything we do from, from, the, from walking and talking and relationships and every, all these things of life are blessings from God and most people will never appreciate it fully. Most just go through their lives as if it's mundane Most go through their lives and never think about it, never express it, never speak of it. A few will take the opportunity to ponder, to meditate on what has God given. Few will thank God for all that he's given. Few praise him for all of his blessings. Let's make sure that we're the few, that we're the one, not the nine. And then finally, this last thing, Jesus says, rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Interesting, the way that this phrase is translated, um, your faith has made you well, literally translated, your faith has saved you. Actually, Luke uses that same phrase, I think four other times in the gospel of Luke. Your faith has saved you. I don't know if you've thought much about it, but like there is something different about this one. Uh, the, the made you well almost makes you think that his faith is what allowed him to be cleansed from his leprosy. But the other nine were cleansed from their leprosy also. That's like, that's the problem is that they were cleansed and they weren't thankful or they didn't express their things. They were all 10 cleansed from their leprosy. I don't believe, I mean, I don't think that like the leprosy came back upon nine of them. I think at the end of the night, when they, at the end of the day, we'll say like, like at night, when they lay their heads down on their pillow, 10 of them woke up in the morning with a debilitating disease that probably would have killed them. And 10 of them laid their heads down at night free from that disease. But one of them receive something even greater. And I think that as you're reading throughout Luke, it is an emphasis throughout Luke, all throughout this book, and we're seeing it here also, that there is something greater than a physical sickness being taken care of. 
There is something greater than having an extended physical life. That's being saved. This man received something greater than the other nine. They're all saved from their sickness. One of them was saved from his sins. I think that Jesus is really emphasizing that here. Your faith is why. The man who believed Jesus to be Lord and Master, when Jesus told him to go, he went. And after going, and after being cleansed, and after being washed, he returned and praised God and thanked God. My prayer for all of us is is essentially the same. That we would be people who believe Jesus to be master. That when he tells us to do something, we do it. And after receiving cleansing, and after receiving um, forgiveness, and after receiving a washing, a purification, we will be people who fall on our knees before him and never forget what he's done for us and always express to him our thankfulness, always fall before him, always praise him and always lift his name on high from our voices because he has given to us what we cannot give to ourselves. If there's anyone in here this morning who is not yet a Christian, we would love to help you in any way that we can become one. If we can study with you, we would love to study with you. If we can pray with you, we would love to pray with you. If we can baptize anybody in here this morning and have you help you have your sins washed away, we would love to help you in any way that we can. And if we can help you this morning, we offer you an opportunity to sit on one of the front rows while we stand and sing this invitation song. Wonderful story of love. Wonderful to see you all this morning. We're very glad that you've chosen to worship with us at Southern Hills. And if you're visiting, we're especially glad that you're here. Thank you so much. We hope that you can spend a little bit of time after our worship service uh, continuing to visit with us, letting us get to know you. We do have Bible classes prepared for everyone, and we hope that everyone can stay for our Bible classes. We will close our worship service this morning by singing How Sweet, How Heavenly, number 250, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer.
Let's go to our God and Father in prayer. Oh, most wonderful, most gracious and glorious God and Father in heaven. We thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have given to us to come together and praise your name and remember the death and resurrection of your son. Father, we are so thankful to be live in a place where we have the freedom to do this and a building in which to do this. For there's so many places all over the world where this cannot take place, either because it's illegal or they do not have the resources to do it and congregate in a place like this. Father, we're so thankful for this beautiful day and in it we see your glory and we see your creation. Truly, your handiwork is everywhere. Father, I should be with us this week as many will be traveling for the Thanksgiving holiday. And Father, please be with those. Well, this is a, for many, it's a happy time of year and an enjoyable time of year, but for many, it is also a hard time because there are so many who do not have loved ones or have lost loved ones. And be with those who do not have families to celebrate this holiday with or who have had families but have lost loved ones. Father, please put your hand of comfort for them because this can be a very difficult time of year, Father. Please be with them and guide, guard, and direct them. And Father, please help us to be thankful throughout the year. Help us to remember that it's just not just one time of the year that we're supposed to be thankful, Father. Help us to remember that we are always to be thankful. And help us to be a thankful people, people who are always praising you and thanking you for what you have done for us. Because, Father, you have given to us your Son, who is the key to eternal life if we walk in him. Father, please help us to strive to do that. Help us to walk in the light as he is in the light and bring those who are in darkness to the light. Father, it is only because of you that we have a reason to live and a life to live, Father. Please help us to never forget that and never forget that you hold the whole world in your hands, Father. Please be with us as we depart from this place and please keep us safe. And Father, please most of all forgive us of our sins for they are many. And again, thank you for your son who grants us access to you and forgiveness for those sins. It's through Christ we pray. Amen.